Hi, this is Roger. Thank you for dropping by. We're going to have a go at this today. Notorious um, mass produced Odont Oncidium type. No name. Uh, Bosch label of it. I must have had to take that somewhere because that's my label maker. But all it says is Oncidium hybrid, which is all you can say about these things. Hang on, cat wants to go out. Come on in, you. You stood there looking at it long enough and didn't go out. Now you're going out. Thank you. Oh, it's the third time he's gone to the door and turned around and come back in. And fourth go, he's actually gone out. He's messing me about today. <sighs> right, um, first thing that blooms off. And that was two spikes from the same bulb. Um, but again, you know, these things are force grown at a rate of knots that we can't normally compete with. Well, I can't anyway. Some possibly can, but not me. I usually end up with spikes less than what I've started with from my own bulbs that I grow. Now this is in cocoa peat. It was earmarked to come out as soon as I brought it home. But this is what I've been waiting for. New growth. That's what I've been waiting for, because now I know I'm going to get some new roots. Um, I will take the sheath away from that new growth, so that the new roots go straight into the media. That, I always do that. And then, luckily with this stuff, it's in the cocoa peat, but the bottom parts of the cocoa peat, when I first lifted it out of the pot, fell off. So um, it's not too bad, and I've been keeping it half dry. I know it's a strange expression, but basically it has to get virtually bone dry before it gets watered, and then it doesn't get watered like I water other plants. It, it just gets enough to get it damp again. As you can see, this isn't soaking wet, but it's damp. And that's how this stuff works. Ugh, rotten pseudo bulb, and liquid came out of that. Not too bad. So obviously a pseudo bulb got buried in the media when this was done. Now a lot of these roots around the top here that have just gone around the top of the pot. <laughs> we wonder why they did that. They put their toe in the media and thought, yeah, not so keen on that. And there's another another manky pseudo bulb there. So we'll let that one off as well. They're just basically pulling off so they're no big deal here. The media itself is falling away nicely as this stuff does and if a little tiny bit is left in there it's not the end of the world. So as I said what I'm interested in is the next set of roots but the set of roots that were running around the top of the pot some of them had stayed dry too long and have actually died back. Yeah but quite a lot of them are viable and the fact that they were around the top of the pot they might have an association with the media and therefore when I pop them up they might not object you know to the what is a transition but they might not object too much because they were sort of touching the media before but the really really crispy dead ones are coming off and what's left will get buried in the pot, whether it likes the transition or not. I always sort of think it's worth a try. It's worth a go. So that's just some more sheaths here. Now, taking sheaths off of the oldest bulbs isn't going to achieve much because the chances of new roots coming out of there are very slim. But if you are like me and somewhere in your grow room you have some scale lurking, then They'll find those sheaths and they'll think, woohoo, hidey hole, and they'll get in there. So by not having them there, they can't hide. No hiding place. Not on this plant anyway. So as I say, I'm just taking the obviously dead roots off because otherwise they will show when I pot it up and it'll just take the edge off of the look. Most of what's left is actually alive, so not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, I mean, I must admit, with that button cocoa peat stuff, 
and these Oncidium type into generics. I've had some that, you know, you, you, you start taking the media off and there's nothing left. The roots are just dead. There's just nothing to work with. And that's normally when they've just been left in there too long and it's gone off, you know. And sometimes that's what they're like when you buy them. And they've, you know, the media's already gone off and the roots have already failed. But it doesn't show for a while. <laughs> Like I've often said, some orchids are dead, they just don't know it yet. Most of the really dead stuff that's sort of left on the plant is, is right at the back of the plant, the oldest bulbs. Unfortunately, this doesn't work so well for people to, that want to see close in what I'm doing. Because I'm right-handed, my left hand is virtually always in the way of the camera. But it's difficult, I'd have to move everything to put the camera that side. Um, I can't just put it on the table there, it'd be too close. You know, then you'd be, you wouldn't, it would be just too close in. So this is the sort of best I can do. Anyway, that's um, good enough. Good enough. That's not a bad root system to pot, quite honestly. Actually, this is a branching root system, so I'm actually going to trim some of these long roots and try and force them back. And that works quite well on Oncidium types, but being that type of root system, it wouldn't work on everything. Um, and then they'll, they'll, they'll react to that and start branching higher up, and I get some new growth tips on the roots, because at the moment, although these roots are quite viable, there's not a green tip anywhere in sight. And no, I haven't cut them all off. <laughs> right, so I'm just going to pop that in there so that it doesn't fall over. And then we'll just go and empty this out, get it out of the way. And then we'll do the pot selection and media selection and get it set up. And then it can stay where it is for a couple of years. So, you know, it's well worth doing this, this sort of thing. Um, but timing it is, it, it, it's more important really than what you're doing. You know, your media choice should go with the plant and the size of the root system and everything. Yes, that's quite important. But different people's environments will have a better media for that environment than, you know, a different one that's better for them than perhaps other things. So the media selection is not of huge importance as long as it suits your environment and the way you water, the way you work. Um, so it's important from that point of view. But the timing on these things is probably the most important thing. And you need to do it when you've either got new roots started or you know they're coming soon. That way the old root system hasn't got to support the plant too long. Now on this one, the, the pseudo bulbs I've got are slightly shriveled, but they're not gone, you know, so it's, it's not dehydrating and it's got nice bright green leaves. So this would survive without roots for a while. It can, it can photosynthesize, it can still provide some sugars and feed for itself just via light, um, but it does need dehydration as well. Right, so we'll clear this away, I'll be back. Right, so we're back. That's the pot I'm going to use. It's got a good air cone in it and nice big ventilation holes. No side ventilation. Um, Odontoglossum type into generic like to stay moist. Not soggy, but they like to stay moist. And in their growing season, they will drink. And that way you swell those bulbs up and get good sized bulbs and then you might even get two flower spikes. Or if it normally does two, you might get three. Who knows? But the pot's too big. We'll deal with that in a minute. Now I've got two types of bark on the floor and I've got my Welsh moss. My latest idea is instead of using the cocoa husk, which does go off and I'm told, I haven't directly seen it yet, that when it goes off, it goes off flipping quickly and it will take your roots down if you're not on the ball. Um, it sort of comes into a similar category to the sphag dried sphagnum moss, the New Zealand type moss, um, which also can go off, although I don't think that just goes downhill, but apparently that cocoa has dust, does. So my idea is to stop using that to a great extent and use the Welsh moss instead, either in chunky pieces or chopped up. 
and that's my moisture retention to go with my bark. Yeah, so that's my idea. So there's two types of bark on the floor. There's some big stuff. How do you turn a big pot into a smaller pot? First thing you do is plenty of cropping. The next thing you do is pop your plant deep. You don't bring the media right up to the rim. So if I, if I only bring my media up to that ridge there, I've only got that much media in the pot that's going to stay wet. And that will dry nice and quickly because the air can get at it from underneath and from above. So it's not going to stay wet long. So that's my crocking. Um, that particular bark, in theory, I could, like a huge bag full here on the floor. You'll like this. <laughs> You'll like this. Um, let me just get some more bark so I can be mixing up the mix while I'm going on. Um, later this week, I will be doing a repotting session that's never been done before on my channel. <laughs> I'm going to be repotting six Phalaenopsis all in one go that are not mine. Work that one out then. <laughs> but yeah, that's just going to be a, a sort of marathon session. Um, and it will be along the lines of a how-to. Um, you know, the plants have been given to me to deal with, even though the person who plants they, they are, which I will go into when we do the video, um, would be capable of doing them, but didn't have, didn't have the media, didn't have a change of pots if anyone needed, you know, going up a pot, or in some cases going down a pot size. So, as I had all the stuff, it made sense for me to have a go at it. And quite honestly, in my book, even though I don't grow Phalaenopsis that much, in the main, they are one of the easiest orchids to repot because they've got such big chunky roots that you're not gonna you're not gonna damage them because they're fragile, you know, like things like Miltoniopsis, zygopetalums, yeah? You've only got to breathe on those flipping things and they bruise. And and that can be the end of that root. It can fail as a consequence. So uh, from that point of view, Phalaenopsis are pretty easy. And once you've got them repotted into the media you like, because that might not be the same as what they come in, you know, like absolutely compacted moss, which is just not right for Phalaenopsis really, might be in a nursery, you know, where they've got 27, 28 degrees when they want it, but not necessarily for us humble folk. Um, so yeah, it'll be a sort of how-to, really. I don't really grow phalaenopsis. I haven't got enough to do much of a how-to on them. So I'm just going to put a bit more in. I want the, the volume of this. See now, if, if, you know, different types of orchids would get different amounts of moss. That, that's the way I sort of look at it. And might be chopped up smaller or not at all. But this root system is what I would call medium for this type of orchid. So it's not a fine root system, but it's not a thick, chunky one either. It's a combination of the uh, sort of halfway between the two. So I'm doing a media halfway between the two. So it's got the Burnham's medium bark, which by other brands' grades would be classed as probably somewhere between small and medium. Um, it's certainly not a seedling grade, you know, so I'm happy with that. Um, I don't call it medium, no, I call it small. And um, then I've got my live Welsh moss. That's my moisture retention for a Oncidium odontoglossum type. And as I said, these things will drink when they're growing. And when they're not growing, if you keep them wet, the roots will rot. So they have predictability. And you can see where these roots went round the pot. <laughs> You got like nothing round the back. There's a hole in the middle. That's where the you know the bulk of the media was. So I'm putting this quite tight to the back of the pot, so that the new growth has got the whole pot to grow on, and that and so has the next one, and the next one with absolute brilliant care and everything like that might be the next two. 
because one can become two. They can produce two new growths. If they're ultra happy and everything's good, they may go to two. So we push it right to the back. I put some down the back so that I'm pushing against something and I am got to try and cram it down there once I've got the plant in place. There we go, and I'm just looking at the root system now to see if when I put this in here, it's gonna leave gaps. And I don't think I'm gonna have gaps. I think it's gonna be okay. It's just this little bit here it needs a little, little bit of wiggling. Wouldn't matter, wouldn't be the end of the world if there were some air gaps, but these, these types of orchids will grow better if their roots are physically touching some media, um, rather than not, if you see what I mean. So you can adjust that in your potting, how you do your potting. They're relatively sturdy roots, but um, they will crush and they will snap if you bend them too much. So, a bit of care, you know. You only do it once every couple of years. What are you rushing for? Well, take your time, yeah? Stand back every now and again and have a look, or in my case, lean back. <laughs> right, so all of the roots we had are now in the media. Some of them may object and say, no, I don't like that. I was in the air before and I like that a lot and I don't like the media, I'm gonna die. And others will probably think, thank goodness I've got some media to grow in now, you yeah? know? So there we go. No, virtually no root showing except for that little bit where that curve came round there. And I like that when I pot a plant because I can watch that bit now and see if they start growing. Whereas before, I couldn't. I'm pressing down around the back of the pot because the media was a little high for the back of the plant and I don't want pseudo bulbs buried. So I'll just press that down a little bit. And the new growth is sitting on the surface. As soon as those roots come out, they'll go straight down in the pot. Now, the only problem I've got with this now is the bark I used for crocking is filthy, absolutely filthy. Filthy. The water comes out like dirt comes out of it. It's filthy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now, which sounds a bit horrendous, but think it through, is I'm going to go and get my tap going, you know, with some slightly warm water as well as cold, so that it's not the freezing cold water out of the cold tap. That will be a bit of a shock. So some just tepid water running from the tap, and I'm going to run it through that pot until the dirt stops coming out. And you sort of think, but tap water? Yeah, then I'm going to come in here and do another rinse with RO water, which will wash the tap water out. And then that's what it can sit in for a while. Um, it won't get any feed. Um, I watered and fed everything in here, this, well, virtually everything, all of the mounts and all of the normal pots and the holy clay pots. What didn't get done was the cooler, shadier set and Derek's plants which I treat like the cooler, shadier ones. They get virtually no food. That they're, they're just not growing enough to warrant loads of food yet. Um, they're not big enough and strong enough, so they get very little food, as do my cooler, shadier set, because they don't use the food. So there we go, we'll put our, as <laughs> soon as I use my label maker for that one, we'll put that back in, just to remind me that it's non cydium hybrid. <laughs> You know, because I'd, I'd forget otherwise, you see. <laughs> Mucking around. Right, so there we go, a quick repot of a single plant. Um, and for this type of Oncidium intergeneric, repotting is pretty predictable. You need growth. You need it to be active. If it's dormant, like this has been since I bought it, it had already produced all its spike and all the blooms were open, at that point, it's dormant. There's nothing growing anywhere on the plant. And in that co cocoa peat stuff, it's not a good idea to keep it wet when it's in that state. But it's now coming back into vegetative growth, which in turn will generate root growth. It now needs its strength built up. So soon it will start getting the slightly heavier feed for the growing season. Um, and hopefully, in turn, these slightly shriveled older bulbs might plump up. They don't always, but occasionally they do.
So there we go, quick repot. Um, I've got more repots to do, not a lot. Um, there's a couple of just random pots that have just been in, in there quite a long time. My big restrepias, you know, the, the big ones, they both need doing. They've been in their pots a long time now. They need, they, they would split into four good sized plants, but then what am I going to do with them? You know, I can't stand wrapping plants off and posting them, it drives me up the wall. And they can't go abroad, so they can only go to people in this country. So I'm just going to leave them the same size they are. I'll, I'll repot the whole thing and keep them as a specimen sized plant. And then there's the mounts to do where we've got to change the moss, so I've got that to do. In addition to that, we will have part two of the um, doodars, the uh, project orchids. So another three plants to look at the what they were like two months ago and what they're like now. I'll get one of those done this week. So there's yeah, some stuff to come this week. I can be kept busy. And in amongst the uh, orchid videos, which are almost daily, not always, but mainly, I'll throw in a bonsai video every now and again. And although I'm not posting them on the orchid channel, I still think personally it's worth mentioning them. So even though you, even though the people who aren't interested in the bonsai, I've got rid of them. They're not on the orchid channel anymore. So you've got your wish. <laughs> but a mention that I've put a new one up, I don't think that will order. I am trying to build a brand new channel over there after all. So there we go. Quick repot. Um, not a bad root system. New media. Um, Total change to the media it was, it was in, but I was lucky because quite a lot of the roots were around the top of the pot, so they were like half in and half out, so it's not quite such a major transition for those, and I will get a new root system soon anyway. So, Right, let's go and wash all the dirt out. <laughs> See you next time.